Idle animations are crucial for not making your game feel like it's frozen. Many other tutorials use procedural animations, but I find that making your own is simpler, easier and gives you more control. If you find this helpful, please subscribe, so let's slide in. I will start by opening up Godot, and I have my player scene here, and I'm gonna drag this down so it's easier to see. And I have an idle animation, so this is an animation player. Let's see if I can find it, idle animation player. And this is an animation player, so just hit the plus button and add a animation player. And it's this one, and on this animation player, I've made a new animation, so hit animation and then new, and then it doesn't matter what you call it, I call mine idle animation. And on this animation, first you want to enable autoplay on load, and this makes it start playing as soon as it loads. And then you also want to enable animation looping, this will loop the animation, so once it's done playing, it will go around and loop again. And then to the part where we're animating, the way I've handled it is that I have a node that contains all my equipment. So here I have the rifle and I have the hammer for example. And as a parent I have just a node 3D that I've called idle. And if I animate the idle node, everything as a child will be animated as well if it's the position. So if I play this animation you see that both the hammer and the rifle are moving so that way you only have to animate one node and the parts I've animated are if I select the idle and we go to the transform if I play it you'll see that I'm animating the Y position so that's up and down and I'm also adding a bit of rotation on the Y as well if we go into the camera's perspective so select the camera 3D and then preview I can now play the animation and you'll see it goes a little bit to the side and then up and down. So the first few keys on the animations are just the default values. And then to make a new key, let's say you wanna go to one second or 1.5, it may be a little bit hard to get the exact time on the timeline. And then you can just change the snapping. So if you want it to snap at, let's say 1.5, you can make it snap every 0.5 and then you'll get it more easily. So let's say I go to this key and here I see I've increased the height a little bit by 0.005 and I've made the Y rotation 0.1. And to actually make the rotation and the height, you just move the cursor to the point in the timeline you want to change, select the node you want to animate and then you change these values so just to show it i'm gonna move it up a little bit more rotate it a little bit more and then you hit the key and make sure you do that for all the properties you want to animate if it's a new thing that you haven't animated before so let's say the scale and yeah, i hit the key it will prompt me to create a reset track and you can do that if you want i would recommend doing that for the default value in the beginning and then you just hit create so now when I play it, you'll see it looks like that. I would recommend going a little bit up and then going a little bit down, then maybe up again to the normal. So the starting position, then going up and then down and then back to the normal position. And just doing that over and over again. I found that time between these are pretty good for 1.5 seconds, but you might want to move them closer to each other or further away to make it slower. If you want them to smoothly transition between each other, you want to change the interpolation mode to cubic. This makes the whole animation more smooth. I've found that this is both easier, simpler and gives me more control on making idle animations. Thanks for watching and special thanks to the Kofa members for making this video possible. If you want to support my work and have your name be featured in future videos, Check out my Ko-Fi in the description and I'll see you in the next one.